What was that? Did you hear that? It sounded like a growl, didn't it? I thought I just heard a growl. Sorry, butterflies. I know it's just a little bit to the... There we go. That is... That one is... There we go. No, that is an Atria. There is a, there is a monarch. Is it the same one that I'm looking at? No, that's a different one. So there is a, there, this is one of the Af Acrias, it looks like. There is an African monarch, but I don't think we'll be able to see it. It's quite, have you got it? There we go. So we've got three down now. Where are you? Well spotted. There we go. That is now the, there we go. You can see the, the monarch butterfly. There we go. Wonderful. Fantastic. We need to find Brent's, all his favorite Acrias. I'm going to be looking for the wandering donkey, because there are quite a few of them around at the moment. There have been plenty of them. So here we go. Lots and lots and lots of a butterflies, but we're going to... That looks like a, one of the sulphur tips to me. No, I don't think we're going to bother to see that one. That one is very active. Diadem, which would be the number one on our list with Brent. I'm just trying to see if it's got the black dots on the wings. It doesn't look like it. So we get two species of butterfly that look very, very similar. You get the African monarch, which is this orange, black and white, but it has black dots on the wings, so hopefully this butterfly will land for us at some point and we can get a clear view of its wings. But the female diadem, funny enough, it doesn't have the black spots. It looks very similar, but doesn't have the black spots. And the reason why it looks similar is because it's mimicking the, di the African monarch, because the African monarch is a little caterpillar, eats a poisonous plant, and that poison goes into the butterfly system and it becomes toxic, so no birds or animals eat it. And so the diadem is very, very clever. It's able to then mimic this monarch, which means it looks the same, and so birds and animals are fooled into thinking that it is toxic, even though it isn't. There we go. There it is. A little bit closer, if we can. And there we go. So that little butterfly looks to be a yellow pansy, which is also on our list today, so that's a good find as well. And the pansies often sit like this. They will sit on the open, and they just twitch their wings slightly, and that's why you can sometimes ID them, just from the movement of the wings. You'll find that they open them out and then bring them up again, and then close them. Now, the reason when they close them up like that is just to try and avoid too much heat on their body, to, so that it doesn't dehydrate them too much. You can imagine when you stand in the sun, it's so, so hot, so you have to kind of make yourself as small as possible, so you don't get too much sun on you. But isn't it pretty? So it's called a yellow pansy because it has lots of yellow all over the wing. Is it very yes, yes, you got it. You got it, then. Well done, Batman. Oh, I've lost it too. There it is. You got it. Yes. A butterfly. But it is not a butterfly, is it, Craig? No, it isn't. It is a moth. And that is a speckled footman, if I'm not mistaken. A speckled footman, which, unlike most moths, is quite colourful. And that's because he's a diurnal moth, and he's not a moth that hangs around in the night. He hangs around during the day. Now, I know that's a moth immediately on looking at it, because when you see it resting like that, you can see that its wings are folded down, whereas the butterfly always rests with its wings folded up. That's one of the easiest ways to tell the difference between a moth and the butterfly. And then while I'm at this level, what I'm going to do is ask Craig to come over here and look 